Hi friends, it's Monica and it was March my worst reading month of this year. So this past month I've only read three books and I was hoping to read more but that didn't happen. Anyways, let's just get right to it. The first book I read was Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I did mention this book in my anticipated reads video and I did enjoy this one but I didn't love it. This one is a debut and it's inspired by the Chinese legend Shang Er, the Chinese moon goddess and this legend tells the tale of a young woman trying to go on a quest to free her mother and she ends up battling the most powerful immortal in her realm. We're following Jin Yin who has grown up alone on the moon with her mother. She grew up in an environment where she didn't really have much to worry about but then it is discovered that she has magical powers and she's being hidden from the celestial kingdom. More specifically, she's being hidden from the celestial emperor who is after her mother for for stealing his elixir of immortality. However, when her magic flares, the celestial kingdom takes note of that and she is forced to flee the moon and seek refuge in the celestial kingdom. And in the celestial kingdom, Jin Yin uses this chance to disguise herself as a normal person and she manages to find her way to receive an education alongside the prince. The book then follows her quest to help save her mother from the clutches of the celestial kingdom and emperor and we follow her along her journey. So first, this book does read as an adult book since it is labeled as that in terms of its world building and the writing itself. The writing itself is very lyrical and you are really captured into this Chinese inspired world that the author has made. And there are some elements of young adult in this book and I'm categorizing the lyrical writing as more young adult because I find that I read more of that style of writing in young adult books so maybe that's just me, but I have noticed that in more young adult books rather than adult books. Anyways, the atmosphere of the world did fit the style of writing to create a kingdom of immortals inspired by Chinese culture and mythology. Jin Yin is a character who does whatever it takes to help free her mother and she also abides by her honor. And I did find the themes of honor, freedom, and loyalty throughout the book to be really refreshing. The thing about this particular book was that at times it was jarring because of the time jumps. I would have liked to see more smooth paced transitions and the pacing itself be more consistent. And I felt like the time jumps kind of took away from us readers connecting with the main character. And I felt like we missed out on some of the growth of the protagonist and some certain moments and scenes were rushed. For example, there is a small competition aspect to see who will be the student to learn beside the prince. And with that, it was just really sped up and I'm like, okay, now obviously it's our protagonist who's going to earn that spot. But I feel like there's like nothing at stake there. It's just okay, it's just a plot device to move on. I think also because we were jumping to different environments and different places of um, Jin Yin's storyline, I felt like her character didn't really experience that much growth throughout the book and her voice. The good thing about these different environments that we do read about are the different action sequences that are in the book and I really enjoyed that. There are two different love interests for our main character, Jing Yin, and I just felt like it fell a little bit flat for me and it felt a little bit unnecessary that there is two love interests. So we have a unnecessary love triangle. I thought that one particular love confession was too sudden and it did feel a little bit like insta-love because again, the time jumps made for the pacing to be a little bit off. Um, I really enjoyed the love interests themselves as characters and their own twist to their storylines, but I just felt altogether it could have been a little bit more interesting. So overall for this book, um, the saving grace for me were the world building and the writing itself because it's really engaging. It's just like I didn't really connect too much to the characters, but I think I will end up picking up the sequel to this book. And onto my next book that I did pick up was Gallant by V.E. Schwab. And this is a YA horror slash fantasy book. And I rate this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This type of book isn't what I would usually pick up, but I did because it's V.E. Schwab and I did 
previously really enjoy her other books. The writing was immersive and fit perfectly into the gothic horror setting. However, it did take me some time to get into the overall story of our characters, but that didn't take away the satisfaction of the payoff of the storyline. The actual concept of Gallus itself is quite simple and it's quite different from other V.A. Schwab's books I've read since her other books are more complex in terms of its plotline and characters. Although I do have to note that I have not read all of her young adult books and I think I've read most of her adult books so maybe that's a key into this author's particular style of writing. And I think I did see like a, a post on that she just writes for whatever audience that she thinks that she's writing. So her, her different books are being written for different audiences so and I see that. Gallant is following Olivia Pryor whose only home that she's only really known is a boarding school for girls and the only piece that of her past that she has is a journal from her mother. But in the journal itself, her mother's writing seemed to have descended into madness. One day, a letter from her uncle arrives from the Gallant Manor, which is, I think, the home that she was born in. And uh, her uncle is inviting Olivia to go back home. However, when she arrives at Gallant Manor, she shows up and everyone's surprised at her arrival. But Olivia decides to stay there anyways and she has nowhere else to go. And within a Gallant Manor, there are uncovered secrets and... Uh, a mysterious wall in the garden and Olivia is quite determined to uncover those secrets. There is a supernatural element to this book and we get to read about ghouls and how Olivia can see them and Olivia herself is really uncertain of why she can see these creatures and it was really fun to read about the secrets being unveiled. My favorite part of the book were the journal entries that we get to see in this book and trying to decipher what her mother was trying to actually say or the underlying meaning of what um, Olivia's mother was writing about. There are some illustrations in this book as well and I think it really did add to the story. I also really did appreciate how Olivia is um, a mute or she's just unable to speak and the ways that Olivia is trying to communicate with others. For example, she does use sign language, I think, and she also creates noise with her environment when she's like frustrated or upset. In the end, Olivia is a young teenage girl who thinks she was abandoned by her parents and the, her development throughout her time in Gallant really shows that she can be a part of something bigger than herself and that she is a part of something larger than just her own world that she has only known before. My only really big complaint of this book was there was like a lack of depth in the villain character and I felt like the character the villain character was just there to be the bad guy. We don't really learn much about them but I do think that contributes to like the simplicity of the story of like good versus evil so um, in the end I still really enjoy it what I got from this book. And my last read that I managed to squeeze in at the end of March was Beach Read by Emily Henry. I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. So Beach Read is the type of romance book that has more serious topics interlaced throughout the romance story and I feel the author did a very good job at balancing those two aspects of the book. We are following January Andrews who is facing the worst writer's block of her life since her father's death. Now she's spending the summer in the beach house that she inherited and trying to figure out what to do about this book she has to write. However, the neighboring beach house to January's is being occupied by her old college rival Augustus Everett and who also happens to be a famous author as well. And he's also facing writer's block. They figure out that they're neighbors and they take on a challenge for each other to switch their genres and figure out if they can actually write a book that they need to. Gus is a literary fiction author while January is a romance author so it's really fun to see them switch their, up their genres and of course it is a romance book so we do get to see the relationship develop throughout the book. The relationship aspect of this book is very well written. There's the banter, teasing, and the gradual slow burn into something more serious as January and Gus go on like little field trips, little field research trips with each other to find out more about each other's genre. I really enjoyed the trope of like the what could have been romances and since they are old college rivals, and having their friendship build up, you feel that there is uh, something more underneath the surface. 
that does really come out and shine in this book. Basically what we are reading throughout this book is their gradual emotional connection that's building up because there is the obvious physical connection that they have but I really enjoyed that slow emotional growth that they had together with each other and also within themselves. So I really love the rivals to friends to lovers arc that um, our couple had. And one thing I do want to mention was like the length of this book which is around like 360-ish pages. I felt like it was a little bit too long for a romance book and some of the chapters kind of dragged on for a romance book for myself and I just feel like maybe it's personal preference but I do like shorter chapters especially in a contemporary read but that didn't take away from the exploration of the themes of grief, love, confronting your past and loyalty. So with January, she is confronting the loss of her father as well as the truth of her father having a mistress and she's inherited this beach house and also previously her mother had recovered from cancer so January does have a lot going on underneath the surface and what has actually inspired her to become an author of romance books. And the best thing going for January at this point was her writing, but everything falls apart since her father passed away. So following her struggles was really interesting since January is the type of character to believe in happily ever after. On the other hand, Gus is more of a mystery to the readers as well as January since we don't find out much more about him and his past until like the halfway point of this book. His story is one of loneliness, heartbreak, and covering up your emotions. Gus is the literary fiction author, so he writes darker stories. But with his research aspect of the book, we do get to meet people who are from a cult and I feel like the cult side story was one that I really wanted to read more about. And I feel like the subplot might have distracted or overshadowed January's story at times. Other than that, the ending did make me cry with the resolution of January's story and how the relationship has developed. Beach Read is a book that has a lot more substance than what you would first expect from a romance book. And I do like these types of romance books that have like a deeper meaning to them. So I do think with these types of romance contemporary books, I will like space them out because sometimes the topics that they cover are heavy and I feel like I need to find lighter contemporary romance books to read that are not dealing with so many hard-hitting topics. I'm slowly getting back into my fantasy roots and I think I will, I will be reading more romance books but maybe not as much as I had the past two months. Those were all the books I've read in March. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.